Good day, students, and welcome to part one of the complex test uh, practice for algebra. Um, we're going to be going over sample questions one to eight in this part. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with question number one. All right, question one says if x is equal to negative three, what is the value of x squared minus one divided by x plus one? Now there are two ways of doing this. Uh, first one involves just directly substituting and simplifying, and the second method involves um, reducing and then substituting. Okay, so I'm going to do both methods for you to see. So method one is just a direct substitution. I'm going to plug in x equals negative three into all the x's here. Okay, so that's going to give us negative three squared minus one over negative three plus one. Now it's good practice to always use parentheses anytime you substitute in values especially when the value is a negative value, okay? All right, negative 3 squared is 9, 9 minus 1 divided by negative 3 plus 1 is negative 2. So that becomes uh, positive 8 over negative 2. Positive 8 over negative 2 is negative 4. Your answer is A, okay? All right, let's try method 2. Method 2, um, although quicker, requires that you know your uh, factorization rules, okay? x squared minus 1 equals x plus 1. If you examine the numerator, you notice that this is a difference of squares. And if you know your factorization rules, you remember that a squared minus b squared uh, can be factored into a plus b times a minus b. Okay? This is a difference of squares formula for factoring a uh, difference of squares. All right. Let's apply that here. To do that here, my a square is x square and my b square is um, 1. So to factor this, I'll just read the first and the last and then add and subtract the square roots, okay? So that's going to give me x plus 1 times x minus 1 on the numerator divided by x plus 1 on the denominator, okay? All right, so x plus 1 cancels out. And then you're going to be left with x minus 1, okay? Now, I'm going to plug in the value negative 3 into here. So, if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to end up with negative 3 minus 1. Negative 3 minus 1 is simply negative 4. I'm going to write that properly. It's negative 4. So, there goes our method 2. All right. So, you can see uh, both methods working out. Um, and there you have it. Okay. All right. Now let's move on to question number two. It says doctors use the term maximum heart rate when referring to the quantity uh, found by starting with 220 beats per minute and subtracting one beat per minute for each year of a person's age. Doctors recommend exercising three or four times each week for at least 20 minutes with your heart rate increased from uh, its resting heart rate to its training heart rate where we have the relationship THR, uh, training heart rate equals the resting heart rate plus 0.65 times the maximum heart rate minus the resting heart rate. Which of the following is the closest to the, to the training heart rate of a 43-year-old person whose resting heart rate is 45 beats per minute? All right, so we're basically looking for the THR or the training heart rate. All right, so in order to find the training heart rate, this is what we're looking for right here. We need the resting heart rate and the maximum heart rate, okay? And then we just plug it into this formula. All right, so training heart rate. What is your training heart rate? We have no idea. That's what we're looking for. <coughs> the resting heart rate. Um, it says it's 54 beats per minute, so that's 54 ppm. Okay, what is our... Uh, Maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate, you have to find it by subtracting, uh, it says, uh, to get the maximum heart rate, you start with 220 beats per minute, and then you subtract one beat per minute for each year of a person's age. Okay, so what's the, what's the uh, maximum heart rate for a 43 year old? So we're going to have to start with 220, right? We we'll start with 220, and we're gonna subtract the person's age. Well, this person's age is 43. Okay, so we have 23. I mean, 220 minus 43, which is 177 beats per minute. That's the uh, uh, maximum heart rate for 43 year old. 
Okay, so now we have all the all the ingredients we need <coughs> to figure out the training harbors, okay? So let me write the formula here again so we don't get confused when I start making my substitutions. Training heart rate equals resting heart rate plus 0 0.65 times the uh, maximum heart rate minus the resting heart rate, okay? All right, so your training heart rate is going to be the resting heart rate, which is 54, plus uh, 0.65 times the uh, maximum heart rate, 177, minus the resting heart rate, which is uh, also 54, okay? All right, so all we just do, uh, we can just plug this in our calculator, and um, it will give us the answer, okay? So let me go ahead and do that for you. So we have um, 54 plus 0.65 parentheses, 177 minus 54. Be sure to encapsulate this difference in the parentheses or else the order of operations would get done in an inaccurate order, okay? Enter your answer is 133.95. So your training heart rate, uh, CHR, is 133.95. Uh, but the question asks for um, which of these is the closest, and clearly you can see that option D134 is the closest to our target, which is 133.95. So the answer is D. Okay, let's move on to question number uh, uh, three. It says, when getting into shape by exercising, the subject's maximum heart, maximum recommended number of beats per minute H can be determined by subtracting the person's H A from 220, just like the other question, and, to, and then taking 75% of, of that value. Okay? This relation is expressed by which of the following formulas? So, so H, the person's heart rate in minutes, is simply the difference Taking 224 um, and subtracting A from it, and then you're, you're going to do 75% of that. So H is, let me use, let me use, let me write it in words. H is 75% of uh, 225. A subtracted from, subtracted from 220. Okay, so we're just going to translate this into equation form, all right? So H, the verb we just did as H, is in mathematical form is your equality uh, symbol. So A is equal, 75% of, 75% is 75 divided by 100. Okay, that's a percent rate. In decimal form, all you just have to do is move the decimal form, decimal point forward two times. The, in the numerator and the denominator, or, or just multiply or divide by um, 100. So if I if I divide by 100, top and bottom, it's going to move the decimal point forward once. I mean twice on top, right there, twice on the bottom. Okay, so that's equivalent to dividing by 100. If you divide the top and bottom by 100, the decimal point moves forward. Okay, so you're going to have 0 0.75. So 75 percent. Is the same thing as 75 over 100, and that's the same thing as 75%. Okay, so all these three things mean the same thing. So you have percent in this form, fraction in this form, and decimal in this form, 75%. The easiest way to go from percent to decimal is move your decimal point forward twice because you have two zeros for 100, and it takes you there. Okay, all right, so 75% of is going to be 0 0.75 of is times, okay? A subtracted from 220, we switch the order, 220 subtract A, bam. There you have it. So that's the expression we're looking at, okay? All right, so let's look at our options. The answer that we have is option uh, letter A. So answer to number three is A, okay? All right, let's move on to question four. It says an airplane flew eight hours at an airspeed of X miles per hour and seven more hours at 325 miles per hour. If the average airspeed for the entire flight was 350 miles per hour, which of the following equations could be used to find X? All right, so uh, this is a distance rate, uh, distance rate time problem. So uh, in order to 
get started, I just want to tell you the formula for average speed. Average speed can be determined by dividing the total total distance divided by total time. Okay? So what we need to find first is the total distance. We need to find the total distance. Okay, so the, the formula that relates distance, rate and time or distance, um, speed and time is a dirt formula. Dirt. Distance equals rate times time. Okay? If equal, distance equals rate times time, that implies that rate is equal to distance over time and also implies that uh, time is equal to distance over rate. So all these formulas are equivalent. All right? Um, so uh, let's go ahead and look for the total distance. So uh, we want to find total distance. Total distance. Total distance. The total distance is um, is going to be uh, first first uh, first first distance plus second distance. Okay. What do I mean by first distance plus second distance? Because first of all, we have eight hours at x miles per hour that's the first distance it covered traveling at x miles per hour and then for the second distance it went another seven hours at 325 so those are the two distances we're going to look at okay so to find the first distance find the first distance we're going to use the formula um distance equals rate times time okay so for that one what is the speed for the first uh run the first the speed was x okay so x and then what was the time how long did it take eight hours so if you multiply this the first distance at x miles per hour is going to be 8x okay so that's the distance covered when traveling at mx miles per hour how about a second lap a second distance covered second uh piece using the same formula distance equals rate times time what was the time for the second travel it was seven hours at 325 miles per hour. So if I plug that in here, I'm going to have the second distance. Let me call this D1. and call this D2 so we don't get confused. D2 is equal to the rate, which is 325 times 7. Okay. Let me just write it as 7 times 325 because it's more consistent with the option. If you look at the options we have here, it's all 7 times 325. They didn't multiply it out. Okay. All right. So now we have. The, dis the D1 and D2, first distance and second distance, what on earth is the total distance going to be? So total distance, total distance is simply going to be 8x plus 7 times 325. Okay. Alright, now we have the total distance. What is the total time? Can we find out what the total time is? Well, why do I need a total time? Because if we, look, if we go back to the formula I just wrote initially, the average speed is total distance if you just found divided by total time. Okay, so let's look at the question and see can we figure out what the total time is? If you look at this question, you notice that we have um, eight hours for the first distance and then seven hours for the second distance. So the total time is going to be the sum. All right, so we're going to add seven plus eight, which is 15. All right, 15 miles per hour. So now we have the total distance and total time. Now we can find the average speed, right? So the average speed, average speed is going to be total distance of 8x plus uh, 7 times 325 divided by 15. Okay? But wait a minute though. We were told that the average speed um, is 350. So we can plug in 350 for average speed here, okay? So plug in average speed here, 350. So we're going to have 350. Now the average speed equals 8x plus 7 times 325 divided by 15. So if we want to solve for x, first thing we want to do is get rid of the denominator and then this product and then divide by 8. So how do we get rid of the denominator? You multiply by 15, both sides, okay? Let me see how it's expressed here. Okay, so you can just write it as, um, and we can switch it around. This and this cancels out. So we're left with 8x plus 7 times 25 using the reflexive property of equality that equals 
Uh, you can also use the commutative property of multiplication to express this as 350, is that how you wrote it? 15 times 3. Okay, so we don't need to do that. We just write it in the original order, 15 times 350. So, equals uh, 15 times 350. And there goes your your answer. Okay, we're not we're not asked to solve it completely. We can stop here and compare, and we can see that our answer is option E. Okay, eight x. This is the distance for uh, distance for the first piece, and then distance for the second piece, and that's the average speed times the total time. Okay, All right there you have it. All right, let's move on to the next question. Question five. So, uh, for number five, it says which of the following um, is equivalent to 3a plus 4b minus the quantity 6a minus 3b? Right, let's go ahead and work that out. So, we have 3a plus 4b minus the quantity negative 6a minus 3b. All right. So, um, you see this parenthesis here? We have to resolve that first. With the sign using uh, the order of operations, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Um, remember, parenthesis, parenthesis comes has to be addressed first before you think about adding and subtracting. Okay, those are the last in the continuum of, or, of the order of operations. All right. So um, this minus right here, you can imagine as though that there's a negative one here. One is a multiplicative identity, so you can insert it in front of as, or express any number as a multiple of one without altering the number. Okay, so what we're going to do is distribute this negative one to the two quantities in the parentheses, not just one. So we'll just bring down 3a plus 4b, the other top by the negative one. Negative one times negative 6a minus times minus is a plus. One times 6a is simply 6a. Minus times minus is a plus. One times 3b is 3b. Okay, now we have the parentheses component addressed, so now we're going to move on to addition and subtraction, all right? Well, in this case, we only have addition, so we're just going to be adding. So we're going to do 3a through the like terms. We add them, combine them. 3a plus 3a, I mean 3a plus 6a is going to be 9a. And and then uh, we're going to combine 4b and 3b. 4 plus 3 is 7, so that's going to be plus uh, 7b. All right? So your answer for number 5 is e. All right, moving along to question number 6. Um, it says, uh, which is the sum of the polynomials 3a squared plus 2a squared, b squared, and negative a, b squared plus a squared plus a squared, b squared. So this is just testing your ability to organize variables and to uh, follow the correct rules for adding and subtracting uh, polynomial expressions. So the first one I'm going to express as 3a squared b, just copy that down, plus 2a squared b squared. Okay. So the degree of this polynomial is 3, because you have square and a 1 here, but you have a as a square. We do not have anything of that nature here, so we don't place anything there. Uh, this one, the degree is 3, but b is being squared, so uh, we don't have anything of that nature here. So I'm going to put it to, to the right, negative a, b squared. And then this has a degree of 40 of both squares that matches perfectly with this, so plus a squared, b squared. Alright, notice how I organized it. I uh, placed um, terms with the same terms with the same degree, like terms basically, terms with the same degree in the same in the same column. Alright? So that's exactly what I did. Alright, so let's let's go ahead and um, do that. Alright, so let's draw your line and we're gonna come we're gonna combine it downwards, alright? bit longer. Alright, so now we're going to combine it downwards. Alright, so this one has nothing under it, so we're just bring down 3. Put on 3. Alright, so uh, this comes down as 3a square, 3a square b. And then this one, so you can just add them up. Imagine that there's a 1 in front of this right here. If a variable has no coefficient, you can always put 1 as the default coefficient. One, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, so you have 3a squared b squared minus ab squared. Okay? Uh, so you notice how it's written here. It can be c, d, or e because it doesn't have three terms. Uh, 
So the way it's structured here, the negative AB squared is put in the center, so let's go ahead and do that in 3A squared B squared. So we 3A squared B minus AB squared plus 3A squared B squared. All right, so which one matches with that? The correct answer is option A. All right? Okay, let's move along to question 7. So which of the following is a factor of the polynomial x squared minus x minus 20? So this is just testing our understanding of factor by grouping. So we have x squared minus x minus 20. I'm going to use the x game to factor this. I have a whole bunch of tutorials on this factoring method. Uh, you can go ahead and watch it later on if you want. Uh, so to do this, I'm going to use this. It's called the xac method. Um, I just need a, b, c for this. A is 1, B is 1, and C is 20. There are no coefficients for A and B, so you can just make it 1 dot to B pole. Alright? So A, C goes on the top, B goes on the bottom. A is 1, like I said earlier, B is negative 1, C is 20. A, C is negative 1 times 20, which is negative 20, and then B is negative 1. Alright? So you ask yourselves, what multiples, which, what two numbers multiply to give you 20 and add, or add to give you negative 1? Alright? So I can just make a list of products here that gives me 20. I know 1 times 20 gives me 20. Uh, another pair is 2 times 10 and 5 times 4. Uh, I guess we we'll switch around. 4 times 5. Put it this way. So 4 times 5 and that's basically it. There are different methods of doing this, but this is a method I like because for every factorable trinomial, this method always works, alright? So, 1 and 20 gives you 21 and 19 if you add or subtract. I need 1, so that's no good. 2 and 10 gives me 12 or 8 if I add or subtract. It's no good. 4 or 5 gives me 9 or 1. Perfect, that's what I want. So, I need a uh, of 4 and a 5. Let's resolve the sign. Since the sum is negative, the bigger number has to be negative, right? So, I'll put that in the center. I'll have x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. Break it down the center of factor by grouping. Okay. All right, so for the first two, let's just break it down. Okay, x times x plus 2 times 2 times x and then minus 5 times x. And then let's break down 20. How do you break down 20? Take out 2, 10. Take out 2, 5. Okay. So it's 2 times 2 times 5. I'm, I'm making it really clear so that everyone can understand, okay? Uh, so for the first pair, I can take out some common factors, or one common factor, namely x. So if I take out x, I'll have x times x plus 4, okay? Second piece, I'm going to take out a negative, and I'm going to take out a 5. Let's do that. Okay, I'm going to take out a 5 and a negative, okay? Anytime you factor out a negative, the sign all switches in the middle, so keep that in mind. So I take out a negative and a 5, and I'm left with x. This minus here becomes a plus. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay? Alright, so there goes the factored form. Now I'm going to factor again. Uh, you notice that um, x minus 4 are coming on both sides, so I factor them out. I'm, I'm sorry, x was 4. And then I'm left with uh, x minus 5. Alright, so it's x plus 4 times x minus 5. And there goes your, there goes your final answer. Alright? So, now the fact with form though, but the question asks which of this is a factor. Alright, so do any of this show up here? x plus, x minus 5, voila. The answer is option A. That's one of the factors. Okay? So there you have it. Alright, so take a look at number 8. It says, which of the following is a factor of x squared minus 5x minus 6? Um, this is similar to what we just did, so we're going to get additional practice on factoring by grouping. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 6. I'm going to use the AC method again. Remember, there are other methods uh, that you can use, but I don't like those methods, so that's why this is the method I teach my students, alright? So let's make a x, and then we're going to put an AC on the top, and then a B on the bottom. We have A, B, C. A has a coefficient, so the default is 1. Okay? So we're going to have negative 6. That's A, C, because you multiply 1 and negative 6. B is negative 5. Alright, now let's make a multiplication um, chart for 6. It's not too long. 1 times 6 and 2 and 3. 
Okay. Now, which of these pairs can generate five? The, both of them can generate five, so we gotta be real careful here. Okay, if I subtract this, I get five, and if I add this, I get five. So this is a very tricky problem. So we have to be really careful with the signs, okay? So let's try the first pair. Can the first pair work? One and six. If I play around with the signs, can I make this? Uh, can I make it such that when I add, I get the bottom, and when I multiply, I get the top? Okay, let's. How about if this is negative? What is one minus six? Negative five. What is one times negative six? Negative six. Perfect. So the first pair works. This one is just a trap. Okay, so circle that. That's a trap. It's a trap that many people fall into. Okay, so that one's no good. All right. So that's what I'm going to use to factor this right here. So I'll have x squared minus one uh, x minus one x minus six x. It's not no one. So it was a plus x squared plus one x minus six x minus six. Break it down the center factor by grouping. Okay. All right. The first set, uh, I'm going to break it down. I'll have x times x plus 1 times x. And then here, minus 2 times 3, x minus 2 times 3. All right, so let's, let's start extracting uh, common factors and see what we have. So uh, I can take out, uh, I can take out x through here. So I'll have x times x plus 1. And then here, I'll, I'll take out a 2 and 3. The 2 and a 3, which is basically 6 and 2, 3. 6, they come on both sides. And the negative, right? Because we have minuses on both sides. So you have mi minus 6 times, you're left with x minus. Everything is done here, so it's going to be 1. Okay? Why did I change this to a plus? Remember, anytime you factor a minus from a minus, you have a plus because minus times plus is minus. Okay? All right, so now we're going to factor again the x plus 1. We're going to factor in the x plus 1. And then you're left on the outside with uh, x minus 6, so times x minus 6. All right, so now which of this show up here? Uh, x minus 6. So the answer to number 8 is B, because this is one of the factors. The second factor is x plus 1, which doesn't show up here. This one right here is a distraction or is a trap. Okay? So there you have it. The answer is B. So thanks so much for watching this video. Please uh, subscribe to my videos um, so you can get future updates to the next part of this video and other cool math concepts. And you can share this uh, video with your friends via Facebook or Twitter. You can also request videos. Um, someone made a request for this video, actually. That's, that's why I did it. <laughs> uh, all the videos can be found on myblerserver.com. Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.